I'm Stephanie Lugo, and this is The Market Authority Show. Hey, I'm Stephanie Lugo, ex-corporate 9 to fiver turned top-producing realtor and coach. Along the way to growing a top 1% attraction-based real estate business, I became obsessed with all things marketing systems, scaling, and social. But it wasn't always easy, and I remember what it felt like to lack the confidence, direction, and know-how to make it happen. So I created the Market Authority Show to share simple, actionable, step-by-step help and inspiration to build your dream real estate business with help from timeless principles and today's cutting-edge strategies. Here, we always keep it real and never shy away from the topics that you are dying to know more about but can never get a straight answer to. Clients, growth, family balance, failure, and how to navigate an ever-changing real estate industry are just a few of the topics that we're going to tackle together. Whether you're just starting out on your real estate journey or you've been around for a while, we've got a few tricks up our sleeve that you'll want in on and all are welcome here. So let's dive in. Before we get started with today's episode, I have a special invitation for you to join me on one last live training this year called Four Steps to Your Best Year Yet. It is your 2023 kickstart with me, Stephanie Lugo. And this was kind of a not last minute training that we put together, but Definitely was not on my agenda for the year. However, as I was thinking about how 2022 shaped up for me and my business and for those who I'm coaching in Market Authority Academy and and my colleagues in the industry, you know, 2022 was a really interesting year and it had a lot of challenges for so many in our industry. As we're looking ahead to 2023, I just really feel that the stakes have never been higher. There's a lot of uncertainty, there's a shifting real estate market going on, and we all have so many things happening in our lives so quickly that it can be difficult to design a business that is going to give us life, help us support the lifestyle that we dream of, and vice versa. You know, I really think that when it comes to creating a successful real estate business, there's so much more than just hitting the production and goal numbers that we might write on the board at the beginning of the year. The goal truly is, if you ask me, is to create a business that is going to help support us build the life that we dream of. And that's exactly what this training is all about. In 90 minutes, you're going to learn how to be your best, even in an uncertain real estate market and unpredictable times. You're going to learn how to design goals that motivate, inspire, and create the life that you want. You're going to learn how to easily track your progress to keep momentum high all year long. And you're going to learn how to take strategic action in a way that your competition won't. You're going to learn all that and more in this brand new training on Wednesday, December 28th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I want to see you there. There is still time to make 2023 your year. So head on over to the show notes and you're going to find all the details on how you can save your seat for this live training and join me in order to really create a 2023 that leads you towards the business and life that you dream of. Now, for now, I have for you on the podcast today a recording from one of my live trainings earlier this year. Like I said, I really only do a handful of these in any given year, and this one that you're about to listen to is from the fall, and it was really impactful. You're going to love it. I'm sharing the three systems that you need to triple your business, and this is a framework that I've taught to hundreds of real estate agents across the country and beyond And it's proven to transform the way that you attract and convert dream clients. I really hope that you love it. And I hope to see you live with me on my training on Wednesday, December 28th, where we're going to learn about the four steps to your best year yet. Okay, without further ado, enjoy the show. So the three steps that create an attraction based real estate business are going to help us cut through the overwhelm and busy work to become more profitable and confident than ever, even during a recession. 
Step number one, messaging that connects you guys. Every real estate business can attract clients even in a recession. Here's how yours will. The big secret to success that we have here is we stopped chasing leads and started attracting them. And I I want you to understand that a changing market is not going to change how this works because there are always going to be people who need help with shelter. There are always going to be people who need to move. There's always going to be people who need to buy and sell or rent, whatever that looks like for you. You can attract the right people if you just know where to look for them. And what this allows you to do is stop trading your time for money. Okay, quick experiment. What is one dream client worth to your business? If you can figure out exactly who we're attracting, what is that one dream client worth to your business? Think about your average sales price. Is it, and for your commission, is it going to be 6 k Is it going to be 30K? What about their testimonial or their referrals or their repeat business? When you really start to think in terms of lifetime client value, the numbers really start to take on a different meaning, don't they? Suddenly, we stop thinking about that one commission check and we think about the five that we can generate from that one client within two to three years. So I'm seeing Mary Beth, Priceless, Jalen, 10K. I think we can do better than that, right? Judith, millions in referrals, possibly, depending on how long you want to be in business. For sure. Lizette, they are worth a lifetime of business. If you do it right, if you do it right, you can have each individual client be worth over six figures for your business. Mine is. Jalen, I'm, that's about where I'm at. Our lifetime value for our clients are about 100K. Because we want the repeat business, we want their referrals, we want the investment property that they decide to buy when their kids go off to college, right? Verify or clarify your brand, regardless of how you are generating leads now, so that you can figure out how to start attracting these committed dream clients on autopilot. If you do not have clarity on who these individuals are, we don't know what to say to bring them in. We don't understand how to craft messaging that's going to convert. What it really comes down to is without considering who you want to attract, you can't extend a compelling offer. Like if you wanted to attract, oh my gosh, you guys, I don't know why this just popped in my head, but if you wanted to attract Winnie the Pooh in the 100 acre wood, what are you going to hang out on a tree limb as you hide in the bush to see if he comes out? It's going to be a big pot of honey, but you know it's going to be a big pot of honey because you know Pooh loves honey, right? So we have to think about what a compelling offer is. (laughs) Honey, Yesenia's got it. We've got to figure out what that compelling offer is. And without understanding who it is that we're trying to bring in, we don't know. Lisa says she does not have clarity and she's struggling somewhat on this. We're going to fix it. Love it. (laughs) That was a silly, silly example, but I like it. This is why when when you're lacking this, you have trouble prospecting consistently because you don't know where or how to generate these leads. This is why people don't refer you. They don't know why they should. You don't have a compelling offer. Social media leads don't come through because you just blend into the masses. There's a lot of noise on social media. And this is why your past clients forget you after the transaction. This is also why you can't get clients off the fence. Pooh Bear, Mary Beth. <laughs> the chat is so fun. So seriously, if if you are sitting there thinking like, why do I have all these buyers waiting in the wings just because interest rates went up? Like, yeah, that is one thing. But like, why can't I get people off the fence? It's because you haven't figured out what they actually need. You haven't figured out what the right offer is to even get the conversation started. And so what we have to do is we have to really focus on connecting with our ideal client. This is the most important thing that you can do. You have to think, and this is in your workbook, who are the people that you enjoy working with and who do you want to continue working with? Who are the dream clients for you? It doesn't have to be who are they now. It can be who do we want to begin working with? And if you have trouble figuring out who do you want to work with, think about who you definitely don't want to work with. That's a lot of times easier. What are their unique problems and how can you articulate that you have the unique solution? What are their unique problems? By figuring this out, 
you will win over your competition in a crowded market because you will be able to speak directly to people who need your offer, who need your solution, while everybody else is shouting to the masses. It all comes down to this. Why would someone hire you over your competition? A poor offer is I've been in business for 20 years. If you are relying on your number one offer being like, of course you should hire me. I have experience. I've been a licensed agent for 20 years. Who cares? That doesn't matter anymore. Who has heard the word unprecedented one too many times (laughs) in the last two to three years, right? Like, honestly, this is totally like new territory when it comes to economic conditions, inflation, the challenges of affordability that are impacting every demographic in America. There are so many changing conditions. And I bet you, I don't care if you've been in the business for 30 years, you did not experience in the last two years at all in the last 30 years. We're all in uncharted territory here, right? I'll cut my commission to 1%. That's a poor offer. Why does that matter if they don't think they can even buy or if they shouldn't buy because it's a recession? Why would I buy in a recession? Again, I'm available to you day and night. That's compelling, but available to what? Bother me? To push me? To be salesy spammy? Like, what does that mean? It's vague. It's not clear. And so if I use an example, one of my biggest ideal clients is the second time moving up ICA. When we started as real estate agents, we we were all in on the first time home buyer niche. It was a natural fit for us. We crushed it. We did really well. And guess what? Those people have given themselves many promotions. They have furthered their careers. They've grown their families. And they're now ready to sell that home for almost triple what they purchased it for five years ago and then buy a home in the million dollar price range. That is like my sweet spot. That's where I want to hang out. Their biggest challenge now today is selling is slower. So they're not going to sell their home as quickly and easily as they could have at the beginning of the year. And now their rate has effectively tripled from the low. Their fears are trading a low mortgage with a low rate that they refinanced into three years ago for a high one without being able to cash out. Their desires, they want to be able to capitalize on the fresh inventory, but they need to sell for a quote unquote acceptable number. This is the bare minimum of clarity that you need on your ideal client, because once you can figure this out, then you can figure out how to actually speak to what it is they need. So think about your one to three top ideal clients, because most agents will have more than one ideal client. That's okay, And put this into action for an immediate boost in conversion. Caitlin implemented this strategy and she's out in in Tennessee and she earned more in 90 days this year than all last year combined. Caitlin's a newer agent. She is not the one of these like power players out there rocking and rolling with tons and tons of resources. Caitlin has grit. She works hard and she implements the strategies that we have given her when it comes to this kind of stuff. We're going to be talking about her in a little bit. Understanding your ideal client unlocks the power of an attraction-based business model. So it's how to pivot as the market shifts. How do you pivot when it hits the fan like it is? Where do you post on social media? What do I say on social media? How do I remain relevant after the sale? What am I supposed to say after they close? If you struggle with any of those questions, the ideal client is what gives you the answer. Okay. (laughs) I know I see you guys in the chat hyping up Caitlin. Isn't she amazing? I am so lucky to get to work with some of the most incredible agents across the country in the Market Authority Academy when they join my program. And the worst part of it is, is a lot of times they're not in my state. So I don't even get to hang out with them as much as I wish I could. But they feel like they're like my closest friends. It's so crazy. Step number two, your marketing plan. So once we dial in the messaging, thanks to understanding our ideal client, We have our marketing plan. This is a plan that makes converting those committed clients inevitable. So the first step is we got to find them. We have to know how to attract them and bring them in. That's only one part of it. How do you then convert? Because if you can't convert, then you've generated all those leads and spent all that time for nothing, right? We don't want that. So how do we make converting committed clients inevitable? 
Well, we want to start by sharing that message on and off social media for new contacts and conversions. So remember, we just spent all that time understanding our ideal clients and what we should say to them and how to extend a compelling offer. Well, we have to do that really consistently. That message gets baked into the marketing plan, which is the vehicle that distributes it across all the channels where your ideal clients hang out. Your ideal clients are in your database, they're in your network, they're in your church group, they're in kid pickup, they are overwhelmingly on their phone on social media. And the messaging that you're sharing has to be consistent across every lead source and marketing channel that you hang out on for it to be really consistent. Here's where this goes wrong. The number one reason why you can't get clients off the fence or if you lose them to referrals, like how many times have you had a client who you thought was a sure thing and then they get referred somebody else's agent and they just kind of ghost you? Or worse, they walk into an open house and buy with that agent because it was more convenient. Ugh, yikes. It's because they, they don't really understand why they should hire you over your competition. And you might know because we've already done the work of the messaging, but if you're not sharing it over and over and over again in the right channels, they're going to forget. It is not your client's job to remember why you're a good fit for them. It's not their job to remember that you are a real estate agent. It's your job to remind them and through your actions of service to help them understand why they should never stray. Right. And so that's what marketing allows you to do. Marketing is actually your most important conversion tool. But a lot of people think it's just noise on social media. That's that's really not so. So what else can we do besides marketing? Like, how can we make sure that we make marketing feel really personal? Well, we can focus on real people and real relationships. So when we're marketing, like, say you're putting out a social media campaign or a newsletter to your database, Think about your ideal client when you're putting that out there. When you're typing any one given thing, even if it's an open house flyer, think about the real people on the other side of it. Why is this so important? Because people need confidence and clarity. They need to feel assured that they are making a good decision in a time of uncertainty. And if you're speaking to them and to their needs and not just shouting about the offer that like the the home you're looking to sell they're going to be way more likely to listen to you because they trust that you actually care about them. So an easy way to start this is by connecting with your database. We just had a recent example of this. I think we hit a new record, you guys, (laughs) in Market Authority. Veronica and Jake got 10 deals under contract in 10 days this month. And it was because they were able to reconnect with their database with a lot of the clients who they thought were just kind of hanging out And we teach them how to consistently follow up and nurture with the right marketing to their database so that they weren't dropping these different opportunities through the cracks. And suddenly they understand it clicked like, okay, so we need to actually be able to inspire the clients who feel like they can't buy for another year and help give them opportunities to actually purchase now. And when you're marketing that in a really solid way, which Veronica, she's incredible on on Instagram for one, it allows you to share those messages with your database who is following you on social media. They are watching you and it's speaking directly to them in a really non-threatening way. Like it helps them feel empowered and inspired so that by the time they do their more direct follow-up, they're already ready and receptive to the message that they're sharing. 10 deals under contract in 10 days. They just closed two of them this week. I'm so excited for for them. That's amazing. So Mackenzie and Katie in Denver did this similarly. And within eight months, they had doubled Katie's business from the previous year, all from referrals or leads from their sphere and social media. No spending on marketing, not buying leads, not to mention how on point their branding is now thanks to their strategy. But again, the marketing has to stay consistent. And by making sure that you are maintaining that consistency, you can have incredible conversions without paying a dime on marketing. Like it's actually super inexpensive to do this. And you might think, but like when it comes to marketing to my database, what if I'm coming off as salesy spammy? Okay, so let me know in the comments if you've ever worried about being salesy spammy to your database. 
it me. <laughs> Give me an it me in the chat. Cheers, guys. If you've ever felt like afraid of reaching out to your database or to your audience because you don't want to sound salesy spammy, you're not alone, right? So the chat's going to start blowing up. We got Angie, Jessica, Nikki, Asenia, Jalen, Katie, Charlie. Yep, here, Eileen, Melissa. Yeah, I mean, it's a really, really common challenge. Here's how we get around that. I'm going to give you three mindset shifts that help you get over this. People want more from you. I'm going to say this again. People want more from you. If you feel like you have a trusting relationship with your clients, you have a no like and trust factor with your clients, you have that beautiful relationship with your people, and they understand that you are in their corner, they need to be hearing from you. Because if they're not hearing from you, they are getting blasted by an onslaught of marketing messages on social media and through media news that are designed to incite fear, anxiety, and overwhelm. I'm going to say that again. If you are not being the voice of reason, then what they are instead hearing on social media is fear, anxiety, and overwhelm and anger. That is what sells on social media. Social media is not a free platform. Social media is going to buy attention from audiences and the price is their mental sanity. And the more they can create really provocative headlines and posts that really incite an emotional reaction, the more these clickbaity accounts on social media and the news outlets are going to be able to remain in in business because they sell attention. And if you are not touching base with them, if you're not having conversations with them and sharing clarity and being that voice of reason, you are letting them down in a really important way. And so Sophia says something interesting. It's tough when people believe the news and that realtors are all scummy salespeople who lie. What are you doing to help your people think differently, Sophia? Not you specifically, but like in general, what have you done to counterbalance that? We don't have to care about all the other 300 million people in the US or your, your audience in Canada. You have to care about the 150 people in your network who know that you're a real estate agent and who are willing to listen to you. They need to hear from you. This is your job, right? It is our job to remind them how we can help protect their best interests. Number two, people want less. The biggest thing that changed the way that we conduct business in real estate is the internet. It used to be that our value was providing information. That's not the case anymore because 98% of home buyers and sellers begin their real estate journey online. They begin by Googling and going down the YouTube, you know, like whatever, like they go onto YouTube, they binge all these videos, they start to see all of the different crazy TikToks and Instagram reels. And they're just onslaughted with information. It used to be we provided them the information they knew. Now they hear everything that they never wanted to know. And so our job is to counteract that by providing them with reason and helping them understand what actually matters to them. Our job is to be the filter that helps them understand what is the most important things that they need to know. They want less confusion. They want less guessing games and they want less overwhelm. If you find that you have rabbit holes, thank you, Jennifer. Gosh, I was, I like could not figure out that word. So if you find that you have a ton of buyers, for example, sitting in the wings because they're afraid to make a move, maybe they can't afford to buy a home. Maybe you think that they should, but they're afraid. They're uncertain. It's because they are drowning in confusion, guessing games and overwhelm. And they need you to be the person who filters that out and gets them to a place of empowerment. Because what they really want is clarity and confidence. And if you can help remove the confusion and overwhelm, if you can be the voice of reason, you can help 
provide the information that they actually need in order to make a decision for themselves that they feel comfortable with. They want clarity and confidence. And that is why they are willing to pay you 3% of their home's value in order to achieve their goals and feel like they've won. That's a huge deal. People are not hiring you to open doors. People are not hiring you to print off paper. People are not hiring you to put your sign in the yard. They are hiring you to lead them to a place of lead, by the way, lead being the operative word, lead them to a place of clarity and confidence. So we start with your market's needs. We have to find their external and their internal challenges, right? So how do we get them to that place of confidence and clarity when they're drowning in overwhelm? Well, we have to understand what challenges are making them drown in overwhelm first. Their external challenges are anything that can be found on Google. So like not knowing how to buy a house. What are the first steps to buy a house? That kind of thing. How do you get pre-qualified? Where should I live? Where are the best school zones for my children? I'm relocating to a new city. What do I need to know about that? Those are external challenges. A lot of this is fact finding and education, which your client is probably doing a lot of that on their own, just through Google and YouTube. They are solving most of their external challenges. And this is hard because we tend to focus, most real estate agents tend to focus on answering external challenges. That's why part of your social media strategy might literally sound like Google. FAQs, answering questions that feel kind of like high level, feel kind of fluffy. The, the internal challenges are, are the huge key here. If you can address the internal challenges that are actually holding people back, these are personal and feeling based. If you can help people overcome the internal challenges that are holding them back from buying or selling, your business is going to explode. And so what does an, an, an internal challenge look like? They already know whether or not they can or could move if they wanted to, but should they? Should they buy during a recession? What does that mean? How are they going to do it, right? Like, are they going to make a really solid decision or are they going to be swept up in the frenzy of the market or in the fear of rising interest rates? If you can figure out what's truly holding people back and help them overcome these objections, then you can help them get on a path to clarity and confidence and then you have a client for life. If we look back to my ideal client scenario, second time moving up, their internal challenge is, oh, I miss the boat. It's timing. I always make the, the worst decisions when it comes to timing. And now I can't sell my house because I won't be selling at the top of the market. I'm not going to get the bidding war. Oh, now that I think about it, I'm probably going to have to stage my house and paint that stupid wall and really do all those repairs. I miss the boat. It's timing. I don't need to sell right now. I can wait. I'll wait for the market to come back. If, it, if you're buying, oh, the interest rates rose so quickly. Now my affordability is even worse. Why would I buy when it is so hard to afford a monthly payment on the same house that I could have had for $800 a month less last year? Like these are real questions that people are asking. If you can help people navigate those internal challenges, then you can empower them. So self-analyze. So see what, whether or not you're doing this well or not. I could go off on a tangent on that, but I, again, I want to be a good steward of your time. Here's how we know whether or not we're addressing internal and external challenges. Does my marketing show up in the right areas? Social media, database plan, follow up, all the key places. If you're covering your bases there, awesome. If not, you know where to start beefing up your marketing. Number two, does my marketing create solutions or does it just give info? Are you acting like Google, which is a free resource, or the trusted consultant that gets paid thousands of dollars for a service? Mm, that changes things a little bit in your mind, right? And does my marketing speak to the current real pressures my clients are, are feeling? Are you being very high level, very fluffy, very superficial, or are you going deep with the people who really need to understand 
specific solutions that only you can provide. However you're answering these questions are going to determine how you fare as the market continues to shift. So the goal is to really just begin communicating and serving your da your database and audience on a super deep level. If you don't have a database, if you don't have an audience, your goal is to grow one. Every now and then I get that objection from agents where they're like, but Steph, I only know like 30 people. Go meet more. <laughs> I can give you the plan to do it. I've got a checklist for that. But you have to grow your network you have to grow your reach. You have to grow your impact. It's a lot more simple than you might think. It takes time, but it's simple. Once you close the clients, that's when your work starts. So if we're talking about growing our network and our net worth, your work with each client that you close starts at the closing table. Because why? We want all of those other deals that they've got. You want the sale when they go to sell that home. You want any investment properties they look to buy. You want any of their referrals, et cetera, et cetera. This is what you need to be focusing on as we head into a recession. Not cheap leads that are not going to go anywhere because they don't trust you. Not cheap social media templates because you feel like you have to be posting, but they're just not serving anybody. You need to focus on strategy, intention, and skill. That is what's going to help you succeed into a recession. In a shifting market, the best thing that you can do is surround yourself with the right resources and support to serve your clients and your business. What a lot of agents do is they bury their head in the sand. They assume, oh, all is for naught. Woe is me. I may as well just hang it up now. What are the chances of success with that approach? It's like zero to 2% <laughs> in my official estimation. Instead, you have to take courageous leadership and make sure that you are arming yourself with the right resources and support to ensure your success. Tools and automations. Let's talk about the really fun stuff. So now that you know about the messaging, now that you know about the marketing, how are we going to stay consistent, right? Because you might be thinking like, so this is, I mean, I, I get it, Steph. This all makes sense, but I've never been able to stay consistent. I'm winging it. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. And I feel like a failure as soon as I start because I don't know if I can actually follow through. If you have felt that way, it is okay. You are alone, but we can fix it. And what we have to do in that case is systemize your workflows for predictability and scalability, and what that means is if you are flying by the seat of your pants, that means you're recreating the wheel every time you do something new. It me, says Nikki. It's okay. We can fix it. Um, you're flying by the seat of your pants. You're recreating the wheel. And at the start of every year, you think, okay, what now? <laughs> How do I do all of that again? And instead, what we want to do is have a really clear cut plan that we can just follow over and over that is going to produce the results we're looking to see. So what is a system? A system is a standard operating procedure or a workflow. They're all kind of interchangeable. It sounds really buzzy. It sounds like a buzzword. It sounds like a really kind of like sexy thing that's just kind of out there. But honestly, it's just it's just a workflow. It's the way you get any one thing done. It's a series of step-by-step -step instructions designed to complete a specific task or procedure to complete replicable, replicable outcomes. Now, I'm not talking about one system that manages your entire business. There are many different moving pieces in your business that have to move together cohesively and systems help that happen. So if we're thinking about specific ideas and examples, there are multiple systems in your social media marketing in the way that you grow your database and network, in the way that you're engaging and setting appointments, and in the way that you're posting. Think about like a social media plan or a lead generation plan that you have to generate leads off social media or the plan that you have and the workflow that you have to grow your database. Client retention, same thing, your post-close sequence, your birthday program, your referral program, your annual and quarterly events. How are you crafting clients for life by design. That is, those are workflows. Database marketing. How are you sending out your newsletter? What's going in it? When are you sending it? Right? Mailers. 
Popeyes, metrics that matter, the list goes on. Jennifer says, workflows are definitely what is missing in my business. I'm new and overwhelmed. We spent years and almost $100,000 trying to figure that out. So, I mean, if you have years and $100,000 to figure it out, that's cool. Otherwise, I might be able to help you kind of bypass that a little bit. So back to Caitlin. Caitlin went all in on systemizing her business and very quickly, not very quickly, but very rapidly saw results. It's a slow burn because success is built in the tiny mundane activities you do day over day. And we're getting wins like this from Caitlin in the group all the time. Two strong buyer consultations, one last week, received three new out-of-state referrals this month, finally had my marketing photo shoot on Tuesday for Q3, YouTube is consistent, and she turned one of her challenging stories into a viral TikTok. So like, look at all these different pieces. She's taking all these little wins, all these aha moments in her business and tying them back to specific systems that she has implemented to get her to a closer place of success. It's systems that helped Caitlin in July get seven new clients from Instagram alone. Like that's super cool, right? You can do that. Same thing with Jens. He's gotten more sphere of influence closings and database closings thanks to the systems he's implementing to help him stay consistent on social media. He thought it was really cool that just putting content out there, reaching out to people on their stories, on their posts, and engaging with them led to the natural engagement of them reaching out to him. Attraction, attracting leads, right? Anybody can do this stuff. And so if you're wondering how do you start with the system, think about a outcome that you'd like to see for one specific task. So for example, let's, let's just use the example of, a, of an email newsletter blast to your database, right? That's just like an easy one that I feel like everybody can kind of understand. Well, if you want to send out an email newsletter, what, it is that you, what is it that you want to achieve? What's the like ideal outcome? And then reverse engineer that into, the, into this little framework that I have for you called idea. Number one, we're identifying the results. Number two, we're documenting the steps. Number three, we're executing that process. And then number four, we're automating. So it's important to identify, document all those steps, and then execute that process a couple of times so that you can figure out whether or not it's actually working for you before you begin automating it. And I think that that's really, really important because the more you can really make sure that you have a really proven workflow that did indeed provide the result you were looking for, then you can justify investing in automation, like hiring somebody to do that for you through delegation or bringing on technology to help take it off your plate. This is backwards from what a lot of people do where they immediately look to automation. So they make that hire or they invest in a CRM or technology or a marketing service before they've taken the time to identify the result they want to see and figure out the process to actually get there. So a couple tips to help make this bulletproof for you. Number one, systemize workflows. They're going to save you time, energy, and money and reduce redundancy and errors. So when you do see an error from a system that you're trying to implement, it's just information. It's not failure. It's not like, oh, crap, this thing didn't work. Systems suck. No, no, no. You've identified a sticking point that you need to correct. Correct that so that you can continue to save more time and energy down the road. Tip number three, these could be created as you work small steps at a time. Nobody's telling you you have to systemize and automate your entire business overnight. When you are in the middle of a task, ask yourself, just have a moment of awareness. What am I doing? Okay, I'm conducting follow-up. How can I make this easier for myself? Am I following up with people on the fly or did I have a plan and an intention to get here? Are my automated or are my emails um, templated or my scripts styled in? Do I know what I'm saying or does this feel really hard because I'm trying to come up with something without really knowing what I want to say? Anytime you feel that friction, have that moment of awareness and just try to complete one to two workflows a week until you have 10 to 15, right? That's half your business right there. And then tip number three, systemized workflows will help you make better decisions in investing in tech and new hires. You, we have been able to avoid wasting tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars in our business by avoiding hiring people before we are ready. 
it can feel like an ego play to invest in a, in a new admin or to start growing your team before you're ready. Because if you don't have the right workflows in place and you hire the wrong people because you haven't identified what it is you're looking to accomplish, you've wasted your money. You don't want to do that. This is what's going to help you scale your business. So how you grow these attraction-based business strategies is through scaling. Now, remember, scaling is by seeing greater results with less input. That's how systems work. <laughs> they help you accomplish more while doing less, right? So it's going to help you keep your operating costs consistent, which is really important in a recession. Nobody wants you to be over-investing in things that aren't going to turn out for you. It's going to help you increase your revenue exponentially, and it's going to help you work less while closing more. Pretty cool, right? This is how Bethany, also in Tennessee, scaled from 50 units her third year to 100 plus within 12 months, retired her husband from the police force, and now they're a small but mighty team. After joining MAA Bethany, she really needed some help just with more scalable prospecting on social media, which she crushes. Definitely look her up and the right systems for better organization. By her third year, she is on track to close over 100 transactions, and she is just absolutely crushing it. She has an extremely um, impressive business model, so definitely like shout out to Bethany, but the difference is that she actually put these systems in place. Christina went from totally unsustainable to six closings a month. Christina was in the business for five to six years, and then she came to me and said, this is unsustainable. I just, I need a better path. I need a better plan. We changed a few things and tripled her gross commission income within 12 months as well. Like unbelievable. And she's a busy mom of six. She doesn't have time to be spending 14 hours a day on this business. That's what systems can make possible for you. Abe, same thing. He was, as a new agent in his first year, was able to close 37 deals in 11 months. And he said, as much as my team gave me support, I needed the extra push for actually building a business. And it's these systems that he needed in order to help sustain that growth. And he's going to do even better this year. So that's what I've got for you guys. Do you see the power, the key to unlimited income, to freedom and flexibility, are rooted in these attraction-based business strategies. And they also happen to be exactly what's going to help you navigate the crazy waters ahead with the recession, with the economy, with the market shift, everything else is coming on. Even with the stuff happening, real estate does not stop. And a recession does not necessarily mean a crash of the housing market. But we have to be able to have the right resources to provide our clients so that they can make the best decisions for ourselves so that we can affect more impact. So let's recap. Cutting busy work and overwhelm and becoming more profitable than ever starts with your brand messaging, identifying your ideal client and attracting them with ease. Once we've nailed that, we can scale that with marketing that serves on and off social media, I'm really focusing on conversion. And then we can really dial it in with the systems that make it all feel effortless, right? So like you don't have to worry about this becoming unsustainable, working 20 hours a day, uh, never seeing your family. Systems will help this happen without you being a part of every single decision. Thanks for tuning in. A high five on taking some time to invest in yourself and in your business. If you're looking for more, head over to the show notes to find all the details and links to resources mentioned in this episode of the Market Authority Show. And if you're looking to find a new crew of like-minded pros to ask questions and bounce ideas off of, head over to the marketauthorityacademy.com to join my exclusive community on Facebook, check out my latest free masterclass and tons of bonus content, or apply to my mentorship program to learn how I can help you triple your business this year. Until next time, keep on crushing it.